This is the MAT 140 lecture number 15 on the topics of return on investment, rate of return, and there's a simple interest example at the end. Now all these videos from lecture 15 to 20 are on finance, and I've already done videos on finance that cover all of these topics, but I did them for the Math 106 class, and so I'm going to go through and uh, these next uh, five lectures from 15 to 20 well, I guess that's actually six lectures, 15 to 20, counting all of those. Well, these lectures follow along a little more closely with the actual homework assignments that I created for the Math 140 class. So that's the purpose here. So before we move on to the examples, there are two formulas that we can look at quickly that we'll be using in these examples. The first is for the calculation of return on investment, ROI. This is mathematically equivalent to percent change that we would do in other uh, examples or other contexts. Return on investment is simply the change in some quantity divided by that original quantity. So in the context of finance, we could look at this as the profit or loss amount divided by some original amount. And then we could use these quantities A sub N to represent some future amount after a period of time N. A sub zero is the initial amount. So we're looking at the difference between the uh, future amount and the initial amount, and we're dividing by the initial amount. That's return on investment. And the other basic uh, formula that we'll use is this ret uh, rate of return, which is this compounding percent change. Um, and the compounding is counted by units of N. And of course, this is pretty abstract and theoretical in the way that it's expressed here. But of course, we'll look at some examples and uh, you'll st and hopefully that will help explain how this is working. But this is the future amount, a sub n, divided by some initial amount, and I'm raising to a power 1 over n. This is equivalent to taking the nth root. Like if it was a 2, n was 2, we'd have the square root, or the cube root if n was 3. So we're doing the nth root, or raising to a power 1 over n minus 1, and this gives us what we call the rate of return, and of course you're going to see plenty of examples here. I've got a number of examples that I want to go through. These are, uh, right, and there was one last point, the n is typically going to be some equal interval of time, but ultimately it doesn't even actually have to be time. If you really look at this abstractly, it could just be any equal discrete increment. Uh, and you maybe with some examples begin to see what I really mean by that. But of course the examples that we're going to do, they're going to be time. And one thing that confuses people at first is these could be different intervals of time, but they have to be equal intervals of time. And you'll see some examples of that. So first example, number one, an investment increases from $100 to $160 in three days. Calculate the return on investment and the daily rate of return. So I will begin with the return on investment, ROI. And all I need to do is figure out the change, which I can see is 160. But just to kind of follow the formula here initially, you see I have the future amount minus the initial amount. And I'm doing it that way so that if we have the future amount is bigger, we have a positive here. And if the future amount is smaller, we get a negative here. And that captures whether we have a increase or decrease with the plus or minus sign. So of course, this is a $60 increase from a $100 initial amount. So that's 0.6, and that's 60%. And so we would say it's a 60% return on investment. Now, because it says daily rate of return, and we have three days, we have uh, n equal three. So when we do rate of return, what we're going to calculate is following this formula, my future amount is 160, starting amount is 100. I have three equal intervals of time. In this case, they're days. And so when I use three here, representing days, three days, that it'll be the daily rate of return. So minus one is part of the formula. And now this is definitely going to take a calculator. And you could type it all at once. I'm going to shorten it. I'll show a few intermediate steps here. I'll say 1.6 raised to a one third power minus one. But I will need to get that in the calculator to look like this. So on the calculator, we're going to type in one 
0.6 raised to a power. Now, with my calculator, I don't have to type parentheses here. You see how I get the exponent actually there in superscript. So uh, if you didn't get that, if it was an older version of the software, you'll have to type parentheses because you want to make sure that the entire one-third fraction is the exponent. So be careful about that. And I can see that this is still indicating that I'm in the exponent. So I'll push forward so that I get out of the exponent. And then I want to do minus uh, 1. And there it is. It's about 0.1696. Since I'm rounding off here, I'll put a little wavy equal. And really, it's might as well. I think it seems convenient to just say this is about 0.17, which is 17%. So that's a daily 17% increase. If you follow daily 17% increases for three days, you'll get an overall 60% increase. That's really the concept, what this really represents. Daily compounded 17% increases for three days gives you 60%. There's a very important point to, to uh, recognize here. It's kind of interesting to think about how if I just did 17 times 3, what do I get? Uh, 21, 3 plus that's 51. So that doesn't quite make 60%. So how do you explain this? If you just increased sort of linearly 17 uh, units three times in a row, you only get 51 uh, you know, units of increase. But, but it's because of the compounding. You see, if, so this is, this is not what's happening when you compound. You're increasing by 17% and the value is larger. And then if you increase by 17% on top of that larger amount, that's the compounding. And so that's what we're really figuring out. What would be the compounding rate daily that would give you a 60% total increase over three increments of time? Just maybe for a little explanation, a little bit more explanation, maybe you'll see a connection to another concept here. I'll explain it this way. Let's say from our compound interest formula, uh, if you had some initial amount, if you had some initial amount A0 and you increased by some rate R, or even if R could be negative, it could be a decrease, uh, compounding n times you'll get some future amount. And, and that's what we're basically looking at here. If I started with $100 and the R was about 17%, so 1 plus 0 0.17 three times. In other words, take $100 and increase it by 17% three times. Now, that's rounded up. It was really not quite 17%. It was a little short of that. So when I multiply this out, it'll go a little over 160. That's a 17% increase three times. So a little over 160. That's because that was, I had rounded up to 17%. So let's say this is roughly $160. So that's what we were figuring out. What is that daily increase that's compounded three times that takes $100 to $160 with three increments? So there's my answer. Okay. I think we can move on to example two. An investment falls from $1,000 to $700 in five weeks. Calculate the return on investment and weekly rate of return. So it's asking for weekly rate of return, and we've got the increments in five weeks, so five equal periods of time. In this case, the time increments are weekly. So the work is all the same. Let's do the return on investment first. If you want to be careful about the sign, then you could just do the um, final amount minus the starting amount divided by the starting amount. So you can see the final amount is 700 because it's from 1,000 to 700. And that means that the, th the difference is 300, but I want to include it as a negative 300 because it's a loss of $300 with an initial amount of 1,000. So that's negative 0.3. And we'll say negative 30%. So you could say 30% loss. Don't say negative loss. Just say 
negative 30% return on investment or a 30% loss. If you say loss, then you don't have to put the negative. Now for the rate of return, we want that future amount on top. We want equal periods of time. N represents how many periods of time, and it could be days or weeks, months or years, as long as they are considered equal periods of time. Minus 1 is part of the formula. So the future amount was 700, initial amount 1,000. We've got five equal periods of time, minus 1. Definitely doing a fifth root of 0.7 is not something you want to do by hand. Let's use a calculator. You could either do 0.7 to raise to the 1 fifth power, or we'll just type the whole thing all at once. To get it all in the calculator at once, I need parentheses 700 divided by 1,000 raised to a power 1 divided by 5 minus 1. Let's round that off to like negative 0 0.069 approximately. So writing it as a percentage, and I should have said this earlier at the very beginning, that both of these are percentages always. So the last step is to put it as a percentage, negative 6.9%. So dropping by roughly 7% each week for five weeks in a row means a total loss of 30 percent. And again, you see the effect of compounding. And this is, this is kind of interesting because if you drop 7 percent five times in a row, you might naively think that's 35 percent drop. And it isn't. It's only 30 percent. Because as it's dropping 7 percent, it's less. And so the next 7 percent drop is actually a smaller actual amount. Uh, and if you compound those drops, then you've only lost 30% overall by losing 7% each week. All right, that's number two. Let's move to example three. Over a three-year period, an investment grows from 5,000 to 5624.32. Calculate the return on investment and the annual rate of return. So we're just practicing now. This is the same procedure, return on investment. Well, I can see the difference there. It's a profit of 624 and 32 cents with an initial 5,000 amount. And dividing this, dividing on a calculator, let's say rounds off to 0 0.125, 12.5% overall return on investment for whatever this investment was, it performed a 12.5% return. Now, why did I have such a specific value? Because I wanted it to come out evenly in this next calculation. So rate of return is going to come out exact. If we do the future amount divide by the start amount, raised to a 1 over n power minus 1. Well, in this case, we have 56.24. 32 divide by that 5,000 initial three years. You see this is, it doesn't really matter. I don't have to convert here. As long as I'm looking for an annual rate of return and my time, my n is counting years, um, that's the only thing that I need to have consistent. Minus 1 is part of the formula. You type all this in. It's going to come out 0.04, and therefore 4%. And I and I used that value because I just wanted to demonstrate one more time exactly the significance of this uh, formula. Um, and you could you can see, although it's only three intervals of time, three intervals of 4% growth give you an actual 12.5% overall growth. And and we could we could sort of check that it is working that this is the right answer. You can sort of understand like what this 4% really represents by going back to um, looking at it like this. If you had $5,000 to start 
and it increased by 4%, you would have 104%. If it increased by 4%, you would get 104%. That's 104% of 5,000. That would be one year later. That's the amount. Then you could take that, multiply by 1.04 again for the second, and then one more time for the third year. In other words, you could multiply it by the 1.04 three times to get the amount after three years and this is going to come out to be that uh, 5624 right here 5624 and 32 cents so this is sort of checking right it you don't have to do this this formula works every time but this is checking for uh, explaining and making sure that the concept is really really sinking in uh, and maybe maybe this is the 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 place where I could I could sort of derive the formula right so ultimately what we just did was we took a formula that gives you this future amount with some initial amount that will increase or decrease by a percentage R uh, compounded n times and if I just solve for R what do you get well if you solve for R what we could do is divide the a0 and it looks like that and then, in order to get r by itself, you'd have to take a 1 over n power on each side, or take the nth root. And finally, this is it. Subtract the 1. That's where it's coming from. When we're solving for r, what we're getting is this rate of return, this compound growth rate. And I just want to emphasize that even though it's convenient to just call it the compound growth rate, even that growth rate can be negative. If your future amount is smaller than your initial amount, the growth rate would be negative. Okay, this next example, number four, uh, just serves as a reminder that even though I'm doing all these finance examples, this is mathematics that applies in many other situations. Anytime you have percentage increasing increases or decreases, uh, exponential growth or decay. And what we're doing here is finding these sort of discrete compounding uh, percentage changes and overall percentage changes. So number four, over a 14-day period, the number of cases of a particular disease increases from 10 to 80. What is the percent change in the compound daily growth rate? So here it's not return on investment, it's percent change, but the math is the same. We do percent change generally in any science uh, the same way we do return on investment. So we'll take the new amount minus the original amount, divide by the original amount. So the new amount is 80, the original was 10, we divide by 10, that's 70 over 10, which is 7, but percent change has to be written as a percentage, so that's 700% change. So you can see that it's eight times bigger, so it, it is 800% of what it was, but that represents a 700% increase. Now, over 14 days, how much percent change are we getting each day on average? What would be the daily growth rate here, um, compounding daily, that would give you 700% over 14 days? So that's the uh, compound growth rate the compound growth rate is the same as a uh, rate of return. So doing the compound growth rate is the future amount divided by the initial amount raised to a 1 over n power where n represents the number of equal increments um, of time generally, uh, typically, but uh, minus 1 was part of the formula. So in this case we had a final amount of 80 an initial amount of 10, and we're looking at 14 equal increments, 14 days, raised to a power 1 over 14. So this is the 14th root of 8. Right? So real life applications for uh, any index radical, right? The 14th root of 8 minus 1. So what do we get? We definitely need a calculator for that. So we check that on the calculator. 8 to the power 1 over 14 minus 1. That's about 0.16, roughly 0.16. I'm rounding down a little bit here. 
So that's 16%. Yeah, about 16.01%. So 16% daily increase. Now I go through and, and check this um, just to sort of confirm, to sort of reinforce the concept of what that 16% really represents. So if we started with 10 cases and each day it increased by 16%, we have 100% plus 16%, that's 100% plus 16%, altogether makes 116%. If that increased uh, 14 times, that would be an exponent of 14. So we're applying that 116% 14 times in a row. So that's an initial amount of 10, and then get 116% of the previous value. Do that 14 times in a row. That's exponential growth with a daily compounding uh, rate of 16%. And uh, that's going to come out about 80. It's, it's just short of 80 because if you type it in, it won't be exactly 80 because I had rounded down to 16%. Right? So if I go back and type in this 10 times 1.16 to the power 14, 79.9, so it's just sh shy of 80 because it was slightly higher than 16%, but that's that's the concept. It would be exact if we hadn't rounded. All right, so that's daily increases of 16% 14 days in a row produce an overall 700% increase. It makes the quantity 800% of what it was. All right, that's the end of that example. All right, so one last example, because I know there's an example like this on the homework 15. Um, it's not exactly an example of rate of return or return on investment, but it's a simple interest calculation that uh, throws some people off. Uh, if you're not careful, got to be careful with this one because of the time units, right? Because we've got this two-week period and an annual rate that we're asked for. So the question number five, it says... A payday loan company charges $50 on a loan of $1,000 for a two-week period, and we're supposed to calculate the annual interest rate. And we're assuming simple interest in this calculation. So how do we do this? We can start with the basic formula for simple interest, which looks like this. I is the interest charged. P is the uh, principal initial amount, R is the interest rate, and T is time. But the key thing in this formula is that these two units of R and T have to be the same time unit. If you're multiplying by multiplying by some measure of time here, you've got to have the interest rate in that same unit of time, and, and that's the issue. So if we want to find the annual interest rate, then we want R to be in years, and so we need to convert time into years. So even though it says two weeks, what you could do is say the time is in, in, in years, it's two weeks out of 52 weeks. So that's it. So the charge is the interest that's being uh, applied. And so the interest is 50. The loan amount is 1,000. The interest rate is what we're solving for, and we don't know, and the time has to be the time in years in order to get the rate in years. So that's 2 over 52. And now you're just solving for R. And to make that a more accurate final answer, we can do a lot of the algebra first and then type it in the calculator to get the most accurate value off the calculator in the last step. So you can do this lots of different ways. Just want you to see it this way. If I go, of course, everything's a fraction here. So I'm going to multiply 2 times 1,000. That gives me 2,000 in the numerator. 2,000 R over 52. And if I'm solving for R, then really R, you're going to cross multiply, uh, or you can say 50 times 52. What I'm doing is the algebra all at once first, and then I'll type it in. So putting that in the calculator, you get about 1.3, and therefore 130% annual interest. Now, does that make sense, charging 130% uh, interest? Does that actually fit with what we see in this question? Let's see if it makes sense. We could think of this as uh, 
saying that you're charged fifty dollars every two weeks if you kept that loan uh, due, right? So if you were charged fifty dollars every two weeks to maintain that loan, you could look at that as a fifty dollar charge every two weeks for a whole year. We could say if you paid that fifty dollars twenty six times because fifty two weeks in a year, if it was every two weeks, you'd pay twenty six times and that's actually thirteen hundred dollars in interest in one year. So if I looked at how much interest we were paying compared to the total loan amount, that's thirteen hundred dollars in interest on a loan amount of a thousand, that's one point three, that's a hundred and thirty percent of the loan, right? To, to pay one thousand three hundred in interest, you are paying a hundred and thirty percent of the loan amount. So yeah, it does make sense that that's, that's what the annual interest rate is. Okay, that's the last example for this video. Thanks, I hope it's been helpful.